or you've got uh, some areas. I've seen individuals who have very bipolar looking. I really don't like the term ring of fire. I think it's not, it is not served Eamon well. It's too bad that he continues to use that term uh, because it's not scientific. Uh, you know, people, it, it's an easy term to use, ring of fire, but uh, people can have very diffuse hyperperfusion, you know, uh, hot brains that are really metabolically based and an immune, uh, hooked up with an immune dysfunction. And so to say that that's bipolar illness, looking at a hot brain, you know, you've got, uh, you know, quote, unquote, ring of fire, again, not my choice of words, but uh, diffuse cortical hyperperfusion, uh, it's, it, you can go either way with it. You can get the hypoperfusion or the hyperperfusion with an immune dysregulation. So you can do the same thing even with the really good evidence of brain imaging. You can get cookie cutter about it if you don't ask the questions more precisely. Yeah, and, I agree. Uh, so that's, that's, a, that's a key point. And if the people who do brain imaging don't think about that more completely, they're going to have failures downstream from that, that that really shouldn't be there because they've got some good evidence that they're looking at. They just need to pursue it more, more carefully. So, yeah, it's, I'm, I'm totally with you on that. I'm glad that you have the same, the same position. You know, we haven't talked before, and it's interesting to hear your take on it. Let me ask you, your, what's your diagnostic workup? I mean, if I know, I know it may vary from patient to patient, but kind of in a nutshell, what are some of the core components that you use to help, I guess, take away offending foods uh, or identify foods that a person should be avoiding to help restore and rebalance their nutrition and chemistry? Well, you know, it's the answer to that question really has a lot to do with where we are with the evolution, not only of the science but the affordability of testing. You know, what is that person's capacity to, you know, how can they, how can we temper the winds to the shorn lamb? I mean, they have a low income, they're, they have a significant problem. We don't want to go in and just do what I call a Missouri turkey shoot. You know, I, I don't know if you've ever been to a Missouri turkey shoot, Peter, but what they do is uh, string up a piece of, uh, uh, butcher paper, paint a turkey on it, stand back with a shotgun several paces away and blast away at it and count the BBs, you know. <laughs> and the guy that has the most BBs in the bird gets a case of beer. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm telling you, we're doing a lot of Missouri turkey shoots, and I don't want to be a part of that. I do. I mean, it's fun. I've been to a Missouri turkey shoot. I mean, it's fun. I mean, I'm not putting it down as a process. I, I, I'm, I'm not putting it. Uh, I am putting it down as a process. I'm not putting it down as a fun event. I mean, you know, there's nothing wrong with it as a fun event, but it, it's totally capricious. I mean, there's no, there's no science or anything. It's just count the BBs and take the shot. So I'm very much into measurement. That's kind of a preamble of the whole thing. And then, but I have to figure out how I'm going to get that measurement done with that person and what they can afford. So the one that I like, I do use LabCorp for IgG testing, and they have a test that's a uh, 96 food sensitivity, IgG sensitivity test. And I wrote the number down here so I could tell your readers, uh, listeners, it's number 680230, and that's a LabCorp test. But if you write that and they don't get the draw, the blood draw at LabCorp, then it goes off and you get uh, terrible answers from whoever they took it into because the other laboratory doesn't understand it. Right, right. So what I do is I tell them, get it at LabCorp, there's the test, your insurance will pay for it. And they give very good titrations of the specific level of, of IgG uh, problems. I just had a kid come in yesterday, as a matter of fact, who's been psychotic for years, and we tested him. He's 99 on milk. <laughs> you know, 100 wow. is the top. He's actually mm -hmm. slight, right at 99 on milk. And uh, a couple of other milk products came up. I'm like... Of course, he was, as you said a moment ago, he was moaning and groaning. I'm like, hey, this is the rest of your life, buddy. I mean, you know, the rest of the animals don't drink milk at all. I mean, why, you know. <laughs> so, we, you know, we had our little, and these guys about 23, 20 years old. We had a definite guy-to-guy -guy talk on that. Uh, you know, he's been hospitalized numerous times, totally out of control. I think we have a good chance of turning him significantly around uh, because he's been milk allergic since he was a kid. Anyway. So that was an IgG testing through LabCorp. 
So I do that. Now I also use neuroscience. Neuroscience is paid for by the insurance. Now neuroscience has um, a, a number of, uh, and these, these aren't right in my mind because I don't think about this all the time. I ask, I frequently call neuroscience and ask, but, but Blue Cross, Tricare, uh, United Behavioral Health, those are some insurances that are actually contracted with neuroscience so I can do their food sensitivity kit, get it drawn, send it up to them, and they can send back what their numbers are on their food sensitivity testing. I like Enterolab. I think Andrew Fine has done a great job of talking about, uh, you know, and he has a very excellent article over um, trying to remember where that article is. In fact, I'm going to take a quick look and see if I can come up with it real quickly because um, – he he had just a really good good article. It's not coming right up here. With I think it was like celiac.com, if I recall correctly. And uh, I have he was writing a book. I, did his book come out? The his book on testing for gluten sensitivity. Are you familiar with that, Peter? No, are you talking about Andrew uh, Kenneth Fine at Kenneth, Interolab? Yeah, Interolab. Yeah, I was thinking. I was thinking, I don't know where I got Andrew Fine, but Kenneth Fine. Yeah. Uh, I haven't read his book. I've actually I. I um, recently listened to a series they did. I think it was out in Arizona, and they had it on a DVD set, and they had Dr. Hagen, and, and uh, I think it was um, it was Dr. Fine, it was Dr. Hagen, and I believe Dr. Braley were were speaking on oh, really? uh, gluten that sensitivity. That would have been terribly interesting. Dr. Braley's can, a great guy. Isn't he interesting? Yeah, very much so. If you, if you, um, you want to look into that, there, you can actually go through Interolab, and I think they have the whole series there. Oh good. I'll uh, for about seventy dollars or so. Oh good. I appreciate you telling me that. I'll go. I'll go look that up. So I use Entrolab, but again, that particular one requires an out-of-pocket expense. But if I'm against the wall and they're equivocal about it, I can usually get a good result. I mean, they tend to confirm that whole that picture on the gluten sensitivity, the casein sensitivity side. So we use Entrolab. Um, then we, use, as I said, we use neuroscience, and then the other one we use is the uh, ELISA Act with Russell Jaffe. Mm -hmm. That's sort of the big gun when we have to pull out the, you know, what what else is going on there. I mean, none of the other ones are measuring phthalates, for example. And so if I get into uh, a problem with, I've got, I've really got to find this out, and I know that it's uh, strong, strong indication that it's immune dysfunction. And we have the other complicating factors of adrenal fatigue and thyroid and so on and so forth. We we get into a whole situation of if we don't really chase it down, we're not going to be able to pull that uh, thorn out of the lion's paw. 